What's up y'all, welcome back to the channel. Good news! We snapped our swim bait rod that I was gonna throw this bait on today, last night as I was like filming some Instagram reels. I had the rod and reel right here, all nice and neat, and I was doing some cool filming, and guess what? The line was dangling from the edge of the swim bait rod, off the reel, right? Devin was kind of vacuuming throughout the house, and boom, it sucked the line up. Dude, I didn't even know what was happening. I was like composing my shot for this Instagram reel, and then all of a sudden, boom, swim bait rod off the counter, Trank's 400 flying up in the air, rod tip snaps, and we're like, what just happened? Anyways, we're throwing the biggest bait I've ever thrown on today's episode, and we're gonna throw it on a lackluster rod, just for today. I've got some stuff in the works, I'm trying to reach out to a couple companies that can send me a dedicated swim bait rod that's gonna kick and be rated for eight ounce baits minimum because that is what this thing weighs. Probably gonna snap this rod today. It's an early Guggen Squad prototype. I think it's like a 7.5 heavy, 7.4, 7.6 heavy. You guys know a rod for this bait is eight, eight and a half foot probably and rated for like at least 10, maybe 12, 14 ounce baits. That way it can really chunk this thing with ease. That being said, I'm gonna try and be easy with the cast. We're meeting up with Ryan Rigged. It should be a lot of fun. I'm packaging up some pasta. You guys know I'm trying to do the eat every two to three hours thing for 2021, gain a little weight. It's been going good, been putting on a pound to two pounds a week. Last week I didn't gain anything, I kinda slacked. Anyways, that's turning into a ranting intro. Let's go ahead and get to the pond. All right, y'all, here goes nothing. Here is the freshly broken 13 fishing eight foot swim bait rod rated for up to eight ounces. You can see the tip is a little done for. She's missing the last two eyelets, no bueno. It's all gravy. Just a little financial setback. We're gonna grab us a new swim bait rod here soon, but for today, we have got a rod that is nowhere near capable of throwing this thing, and we gonna make it happen, boys. We might be shocked. We might. You're not gonna get the casting distance you want. It's okay, I'm fishing the ponds, I'm fishing the banks. We'll put something together here. A Shimano Tranks 400 with the power handle. I'd probably, working this bait, rather have the traditional handle, but it is what it is. And then a 25 pound fluorocarbon. So all around, I'm going a little light, except for with the reel. The Tranks 300 would be ideal. 35 pound fluorocarbon is probably what I see most people throwing this with. This bait, I should say. I'm gonna tie a Palomar knot, which like so many people rant and rave about as being like one of the best knots for these big heavy swim baits. And then I got a comment on my video the other day saying Palomar knot's the worst knot to use and that like I'll learn after I lose a couple swim baits. It is what it is, everyone's got an opinion. Who knows who to trust these days. It's gonna be a doozy. I mean, look at this thing. Never before seen with the treble hooks on the channel. Literally just got the owner ST36s on there last night. These are one aughts. It's a beast. It's an absolute beast. Last time you're gonna see the paint job looking fresh. It's gonna be scratched up after this. And I've got the tail in mode B right now, so it's kind of facing down, and then I've got the lip out. You will never see me fish the ponds with the lip in this bait, most likely, because it dives deep and it's very expensive. I'm gonna try my best not to lose it, and if it gets lost, it gets lost, right? That's just part of the deal. All right, now there's two eyes to tie your line on this bait. I'm gonna tie it onto the bottom one, I believe. That's what I've been seeing a lot of folks do when they're fishing this thing, lip out the mode B. I could be entirely wrong. We might go through a couple different modes, meaning like a couple different tails options today. The, uh, the bill on this bait is removable, and I didn't even bring it because I didn't want a chance losing it, but I did bring the other tail, and this one here can also just be kind of taken out and flipped upside down to where it's pointing up, and that's considered mode A. So there's a lot of different combinations on how to use this bait. First things first, I just needed enough line for this Palomar knot to go over this entire thing. Okay, so there we go. It's kind of tough tying that knot on camera, so I just went ahead and rigged it up a second time, but essentially what I did is when I tightened my Palomar knot, I only pulled on the tag end, that way it gets all squiggly and kind of burnt and it doesn't jeopardize the integrity of the main line. Normally when I tie a Palomar knot for just everyday use, I kind of pull on both ends together and a little bit of your main line ends up a little squiggly and I just kind of roll with the punches. Saves a little bit of line. But with this guy, I just pulled that tag end through. So let's chop this thing off and now we can see if this rod is capable of even casting it out. What does this feel like? Oh yeah. Oh, that's a, oh yeah, look at that rod. Ooh, she's got a little bend in the tip. Should be all right though. That is something. I'll tell you that much. Dude, this is hilarious. Drop a like for this, would you? I mean, a rod that's not suited with a reel that's too big with line that's not necessarily heavy enough to most people's liking with a bait that is rarely featured in English speaking YouTube videos. You know, it's imported from Japan and it's just, don't see too much content around it. So I'm thrilled to try and throw this thing out for the first time today. How's my drag on this reel? Yeah, she ain't going nowhere. All right guys, first time ever seeing how this thing swims. I'm gonna be light on these cast, smooth sweeps, because this rod is not built for this at all. Oh wow, there we go, first cast. Oh my goodness. 
oh wow i mean this thing actually looks like a monster that actually looks insane i wonder how long it's going to take me to catch a fish on this thing like this could take weeks why does this reel sound weird maybe it's because i tighten that tension up too much and drop it down a little bit and just on the spool there went a fish or a turtle <laughs> yeah i think that's because there's some line loose here all right it seems to be pretty tight now crank this in a little bit oh it floats i knew it floated i showed that in the unboxing video but i figured after adding the treble hooks maybe it would sink a little bit especially with some heavier fluorocarbon line and it doesn't seem to god i wish i had that swim bait rod handle right now this this is like <laughs> this is like built for some crankbait why does this oh you know what i bet you this tranks is effed up because we dropped it last night when it fell off the countertop i bet you something internally happened because it's never sounded like this and i don't think it's because of the bait at all let me tell you what you want to talk about a splash you just kind of slow roll it and then you give it that kind of like half reel twitch and it cuts to the left or the right Ooh, baby i really would like to kind of walk it more but i think some folks that walk it might put a joint pad in the back half there so it almost works more like a glide bait rather than a swim bait with the s pattern and it just kind of glides back and forth you can essentially lock that back groove and just have one joint almost right it comes with joint pads that kind of tighten up these grooves here you could put one of the joint pads in the back here and then it's almost going to work just like a glide bait with a single joint so i will consider that golly i feel like i'm going to break this rod today i really would not be surprised if i get a hit on this uh bait though all it takes is a little bit of confidence and i'm telling myself this thing's going to get hit i mean reaction strike whether I just whip by the right bass, it's territorial. These things are predators, man. They're definitely going to uh, come up and smack this thing. Wow, look at, oh my gosh. Like what in the name of, do I wanna stay close to the bank? Do I wanna work it out deep? What do I wanna do here? That time it sank good. I gave it a nice twitch of the reel and he like went under, that was nice, I like that. I want him to go a little bit more subsurface, but it's also nice just kind of seeing him on the top waking. <laughs> Any one of these hits is gonna be just insane. And trust me, I wouldn't be surprised if a two or three pounder hits this. All right, y'all, well, we're about 20 minutes in. Uh, no bites yet, as you'd probably imagine. And I'm thinking I'm gonna switch the tail around just to see if it works any different here. I'm gonna see if flipping it over keeps it subsurface any more than it is at the moment or not. So this is now gonna be lip out mode A, and I'm tied to that bottom line tie again. Let's see if that does anything else for the action here. Don't want to waste a cast. Okay, so very similar. Yeah, still staying on the surface. Oh, wow. Now it's almost creating a bigger weight because that tail is flipped up, and so it's like shooting the water up behind it almost. Not shooting it up, but you can just tell there's almost a larger wake. So mode A is how we're gonna rock it for uh, a little while here. And then I have the other tail on me. It's in the truck. I want it to be a little bit more subsurface, but it is what it is. Maybe some heavier line, heavier hooks. A combination of those two things might do it. Maybe like 35 pound fluoro and some uh, thicker ST46 or 56 hooks. Whatever it is might do the trick, but it's tough to say. If you guys haven't dropped a like yet, we are risking it all trying to catch a fish on this thing. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to bank flip anything that hits this. It's just so heavy for this rod. I might just have to go all in, but those are some sharp treble hooks. I don't know what I'm doing today basically is all I'm trying to say. We're just out here pond hopping with the biggest bait you have ever seen. Literally, I don't know if this is possible to catch a fish on this in these ponds. You know what, let's go get the other tail. I'm a little too curious. I'll be right back. All right, let's see what this thing's gonna do. This bait actually ships with the V-tail installed with that almost like longer appendage on the bottom side there. The plastic is way softer because it hasn't been in the cold water yet. Put this tail in the backpack. It is frozen solid. Let's see what that does to the action here. Does it do much of anything? Yeah, I don't know, it's still got that good kick. I mean, I'm just gonna throw it like this for a second. Switching things up for you guys. Ryan's filming a video, don't wanna bug him. I'm gonna continue casting right over here i like this side all right y'all we have just about circled the pond i think what we're going to do for the last bit here is now tie it to the top line eye and see if that changes the swim and if it goes a little deeper stays on the surface has the same action it's supposed to work a little bit differently based on not only where you tie it but with the tails it's always supposed to give off a different action so uh-oh uh-oh I think that might have been what we needed. I think that gets it subsurface a little bit. It almost drives the nose down further. Let's see if that's correct, though. Uh, very similar. Okay. We got to get a few casts in here. 
Okay, I'm not seeing the wake yet, but it does. It seems to be taking a few seconds for it to resurface. Now I'm starting to see the wake from that V-tail. Okay, it seems to stay below the surface a little bit better with the top line eye, with the uh, top line tie. Let's go back to the other tail. I'm gonna call it the standard tail versus the V-tail. And I'm gonna put it in mode B again, just how we started off. Yeah, I do like this tail. Dude, I can't wait to catch some on it. I mean, it's gonna happen like within a week. I'm gonna be throwing it a lot. The problem is I broke my swim bait rod yesterday. Do you wanna try that side? Okay, gotcha. All right, we made a little pond hop as the sun sets. Oh, first cast. First cast, Ryan. Is this a joke? Dude. Oh, perfect. Those treble hooks suck, dude. I told you. <laughs> he just got one on the tiny clash. I thought you were just doing a swim test today. <laughs> Yo, they love it. Okay, here, let's try and get, look. Oh my god. It's the size of your bait. <laughs> All right guys, and there you have it. After Ryan caught that fish, we got out of there. But this has been an insane episode. Bank fishing, man. Pond hopping with the one and only Clash Ghost by DRT and Working Class Zero. This bait we picked up from the Working Class Zero website. There's gonna be another drop in maybe March or April, May, something like that of 2021 so if you want to get your hands on this thing they sell out quickly and uh, the price was $2.99 for this one specifically it was about 340 bucks after tax and so it's a little sketchy throwing it in these ponds because there's the fact that you could lose this thing quite easily you don't have to worry about casting it off because the thing is it floats you can go and retrieve it but let's say you got the lip on you go down a little deep and you get snagged well, that could be the end of it. Let's say you get a big fish on and it breaks you off. Something happens. They take you down into the woods. A lot of reasons why this could be gone like the wind very easily. So subscribe if you want to see more ghost content. We're going to be throwing in a lot more very soon. I've got some new stuff right over here. I want to break out for you guys as well as some stuff in the garage. We got to showcase the next couple of videos are going to be insane. Also, the giveaway winner for the reel is going to be announced in the next video, next couple videos right in the intro. So be on the lookout. If you haven't watched the last video, we are giving away the reel that we bought at Shields. Excited to announce the winner. But for now, I have got to run over to the boat storage, grab a couple things. Devin and I are going to do some fishing tomorrow. So we'll catch you on those future videos. Peace out. Boom! <gasps>